This watch list. So we are now in a city called Shibam. The buildings are all kind of a tall building. They have this weird elevation, very colorful. You can see mud bricks as well. A lot of shops selling clothes, backpacks, antiques. Literally, you can find absolutely anything. Pay attention the way all this stuff is built. I mean, if you're an architect, how do you even calculate all the stuff? Shibam got to make these tall houses to be seen from distance. You will see different towns, they don't look like these towers, these big houses. So the Manhattan of Arabia is the original, and the Manhattan that you have is a copy. This is kind of an antique shop, I'm trying to get some kind of souvenir here. It's um, wood sculptures of Shibam Hazamal. This is Shibam. Wow. It's all wood made by cedar. Cedar tree is the tree which brings uh, the seeds for the bees, where they take the best luxury honey in the world. Mm. Only exists here. What are your name? My Ali. Ali. Yes, sir. Just sir. Yasin. Yeah. Yasin. Yeah, Ammar. <laughs> Ammar. Like in other countries in the Middle East, they're very quiet in the mornings. And there's a lot of people in the afternoon and night. I guess probably the weather. You can see a lot of people on the streets. <laughs> really the buildings, they look super impressive. Have some people looking at me at the moment <laughs> and then kind of hiding. Wherever you go, even if you do like, I don't know, five minutes walk, a bunch of people will gather and start following you. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but they're just curious about what you do. And this is one of the most interesting things about this place. All the kids are, as I told you before, kind of following us. Um, they're just playing. What is that? What is this? They're, they kind of use this stuff to play. How do you do it? Like you just roll it, huh? Show me. Go. <laughs> tell me something about the knife. It's yeah. called the Jambia. The first historical proof about the Jambia. So, uh, for the record. Um, Uh, what was I going to say? The, uh, <clears throat> the the KFC question in Yemen is a valid one before people say, oh, because I saw someone in the chat go, bro, we have KFC in Egypt. Bro, Egypt and Yemen are not the same, okay? Like, the, the KFC in countries like that are most likely off-brand KFC. Like, it's fake, you know what I mean? And not like an officially sanctioned franchise from the international uh, KFC. Saudi Arabia KFCs are not the same, chat. That's what I'm trying to explain. I assume that the KFC in Yemen is probably not like a... I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. It could be a real one. Which is shocking. But... A Chinese food blogger recently went to a KFC in Janine. I lived in Yemen and we had Pizza Hut and uh, KFC in Sana'a. Really? Okay, that's fire. Never mind. Saudi Arabia's KFC is real. I thought that it would. It might be like. Um, I thought that it might be like a, like an off-brand version. Like in Russia. In Russia, currently, they have all of the. Uh, they still have the the same restaurants and shit. They just like changed the brand. Turkey da var. Abi Turkey ile Yemen'i karşılaştırmayın, yapmayın, etmeyin. Allah Allah. These are aligned, globally aligned with America countries. It's like Iran. You know what I mean? Like, is there a KFC in Iran? I don't know. I, I, and it's very likely that there probably is actually in Iran. Because Iran is like still not under genocidal blockades. You know what I mean? Turkey do biz not is biz aynan. Their global website says no to Iran or Yemen. It says Yemen does not have a KFC. They got one in Angola, Botswana, Ghana. Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine, bro, KFC in Palestine. 
Turkey, Israel, Qatar, Oman, Kuwait, Iraq, Bahrain, UAE, Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, Jordan, Egypt, but not Yemen. No Iran and no Yemen. Yeah, we have KFC in Egypt and we boycotted too. Alright, what's uh, I'm gonna keep playing this, I have to pee real quick. Jambia it's on the fifty real bill. The king who wear the Jambia, the Mar Ali, King the Mar. It's called Jambia because it comes on jump on the side. The original ones used to be from the rhino horns. That's why it's forbidden to uh, buy any more horn jambias from Africa anymore because we have millions of the jambias. Long ago, with the sword, if you want to defend yourself at night or any time, it would take time that you take the sword. But the dagger is so easy and quick. So it's only for dancing and self-defense. And when the man working in the farm, he put the dagger in his back like this. Then he can walk in the farm. And when he wants to sleep and he's in the desert or anywhere else, he put it aside and he, he can sleep easy. We're exploring different way of the city and we have kids over there playing football. So you see we saw volleyball, now they're playing football. In the half times and drinkable water and then they keep playing football over there. Penalty time. <laughs> Barcelona or Real Madrid? Madrid. Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo? Messi. Messi Cristiano. Messi. Benzema. Benzema, oh, Messi or Cristiano? Mbappé. Messi! Messi. Mbappé! Cristiano Ronaldo! I love this. I love it. This is football, right? Like, this is a passion. Everyone is like Messi, Cristiano, Mbappé. This is so cool, you see? Football is one thing that is always bringing us together. Yemen, or anywhere you want. Probably if it's the first time here, you think it's like an old town, but the whole city is like that. Hello, He's making the wooden houses that you have bought. Yeah. So you're helping him. How's life in Yemen for him? Alhamdulillah, Thanks God, we're still alive. Is he happy about like uh, everyday life, or he needs to have multiple jobs? Thanks God, we are. Uh, satisfied of what Allah brought. This is really good, impressive. Closing the shop now because it's calls for prayers and they need to go to the mosque, which is right here. All right, we need to hurry up because you cannot stay for long here in many of these places. It's only a few minutes that you can really explore this. A lot of people around now kind of following us just to know what we're doing and stuff. Who is this guy? Like he's just chilling. Like he went to Ale Salvino. I mean he's done a really good job. He's based in Madrid and London. It's like very, very respectful. Yes, I'm going to, I'm going to put the, uh, the interview up on my YouTube chat, of course. Not to diminish the genocide in Palestine, Cubans have been dealing with the genocide created by USA by blocking crucial medicine from reaching Cuba. I want to go to Cuba uh, and and uh, do this as well. Uh, 100%. Hansanabi Productions already took all that shit. I'm going to fucking... Oh my God, I'm going to be so mad. It's the one thing, dog. It's the one fucking thing. I just fucked up. He knows better, too. I'm going to fucking clap him. But I do want to go to Cuba, for sure.
So we're now close to the valley. This area is spectacular. What's your name? Uh, my name is Abdullah Tamimi. I'm in high school. How is life in Yemen? Really good. I enjoy life in, uh, my life in Yemen. Um, I'm so pleasant for what I have. How is a normal day in your life? I wake up at 6 o'clock or at 5 o'clock, yeah. I go to pray Fajr and then go to school until 1 uh, p.m. Yeah. I come back to home, have lunch, then go to the institute at the evening. And at night I study and uh, make a quick review for my lessons. And then I sleep at 9 o'clock. Yeah, that's it. That's a short end. So it looks like a simple life, good life. Yeah. And studying a lot? Uh, not a lot. Do you like football? Yeah. Football is one. Your, what is it? What, what do people play here? Football, volleyball, what is the national sport? Well, yesterday at my school we played football and volleyball, also we played basketball. Yeah? Yeah. And in football, what team you like? Um, for teams I like uh, Real Madrid. <laughs> Real Madrid, nice yeah. one, nice one. <laughs> well, Welcome to Yemen! I don't know exactly what we want to see now, but it's going to be a special, special dance, right? Some people call it uh, uh, How do you say again? Sharh. Sharh. Say stop in any time. Different time, yes, say stop. Stop. Here. That's it, I'm coming. Time. Shuf. Cruz, cool her Different. All cards will. Whoa! What the fuck? Oh, guys, hold on, huh? congratulations. I, lo I loved your trick. Yes. <laughs> So this is a little bit strange because once again, I'm kind of showing you another hotel. Looks pretty nice, but can't forget we're still in Yemen and, and this is the safe way for us to do this. It's not my first choice, as I told you before. This village is called Haid al -Jazil. We can see mud brick buildings of the village that are built on a huge boulder and overlooking the whole valley. This is where we're going now. So we are very, very, very close to the valley. Here you can see all those buildings made out of brick. They are very colorful, yellowish. You can listen to some Yemeni music on the back because we have somebody with a car putting some local music to try to understand that a little bit further. Obviously, we have uh, some uh, security with us. So we'll probably stay for another two minutes because we need to move fast from here. Today we met three different generations and I want to share with you a quick thought coming to my mind. The first generation was in Shiban where we met those kids playing football who were so happy and passionate. Even in the toughest times, the spirit of these Yemeni children was truly inspiring. The second generation was in this village where we met a group of high school students who shared with us their lives in Yemen, completely unexpected. But they also performed for us and even played a few tricks with the cards, always smiling and positive about the future. And the third and final generation was that gentleman crafting those souvenirs in the market. He shared his gratitude for being alive despite the challenges he's faced in Yemen. Thanks God we're still alive. The three generations have something in common. Strength, resilience and hope. These are the people of Yemen. Thank you for watching. This was 